In this lesson, I'll show you how to factor by grouping. This is part two. The first expression that we're expected to factor is x squared y squared minus 3x squared minus 4y squared plus 12. When I first tried factoring this expression, it took me two attempts. I'm going to show you both attempts, the first and the second, and I'll show you how to distinguish which of the two is better. In the first attempt, I rearranged the expression so that this term was grouped with the first one and this term was grouped with the second one. I ended up with x squared y squared minus 4y squared minus 3x squared plus 12. And then I factored this group and this group individually. In the first group, I noticed that this expression was a difference of squares. Take a look. x squared y squared is a perfect square and minus 4y squared, namely this part, is also a perfect square. So I broke it down into xy minus 2 times y and xy plus 2 times y. For this group, I factored out negative 3, leaving us with negative 3x squared minus 4. I knew I could do better, so I tried again. Starting off with this expression, instead of taking this as a difference of squares, I common factored. I pulled out y to the power of 2 from both of these terms, leaving me with y squared times x squared minus 4. And for these two terms, the same thing, minus 3x squared minus 4. I noticed that this factor was a difference of squares, where we have y squared bracket x minus 2, x plus 2, and the same thing here where I have minus 3x minus 2, x plus 2. Taking this expression as a whole, I noticed that these two factors were the same in both of these terms. So I pulled them out, and this left us with y squared minus 3. Take a look at the two versions. This one has three factors and a single term. This one has two terms and three factors. Therefore, the one at the bottom is simpler. When I first performed question B, I rearranged the terms so that this term was not included with the first three. So I get p squared minus 6pq plus 9q squared minus r squared. The first three terms, this trinomial, I figured that it was a perfect square trinomial, and I tested for it by taking the square root of the a term and the c term. The square root of p squared is p, and the square root of 9q squared is 3q. That's one of the criteria for a perfect square trinomial, that this and this are perfect squares. In addition, if I multiply this term with that term, I end up with 9q squared p squared. And square rooting this gets me half of the middle term, where I end up with 3qp. This is half of 6pq. As a result, I took p and 3q, placed them in brackets, raised it to the power of 2, and the symbol here, which was negative, goes in between, leaving us with this term minus r squared. Now that we finished the first part, this term and this term form a difference of squares. This is a perfect square and so is this one. And we learned that with a difference of squares we can split these up where p minus 3q squared becomes p minus 3q, p minus 3q, and the square root of r squared is minus r plus r. This expression represents the factored version of question B, and that is how to factor by grouping. In part three, I'll show you two more examples that are considered harder than these two.